Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day, thanks in a large part to our pals at the VFS School of Game Design. Thank you so much, Vancouver Film School. This rundown is dedicated to Jaden Hybrid 15, who wrote us a very nice long story about his years of watching EP. Thank you so much. This rundown is all yours. Monster Hunter World is going to stick to its guns and all of its other weapons, for that matter. Capcom has released a series of new gameplay videos showcasing the 14 different weapon classes featured in the game. They're the same 14 classes that were included in the last game, Monster Hunter Generations, and it looks like they're all doing pretty much the same thing. Capcom has made a few small changes, though. Many of the weapon classes appear to be giving players more aerial attack moves, while the light bow gun and gun lance classes now have more explosive power. Still, everything looks basically the same, which should make established fans feel right at home. This is actually Capcom's goal with the game. They wanted it to feel just like the other Monster Hunters and are only using the extra power of the PS4, Xbox One, and PC to make minor adjustments. We've been making you know, fantastic games. They've been mostly portables, but we really wanted to step it up for a new era. We have console power, we have PC as well, but we're sticking with the message of what the game is overall. You know, you're gonna be hunting, you're gonna be crafting, finding loot getting better gear and weapons to hunt better monsters and uh, making sure people get that, that line first. Monster Hunter World is slated to launch on the PS4 and Xbox One worldwide in early 2018, with a PC version set to follow after that. Capcom is also bringing the series to the Nintendo Switch with Monster Hunter Double Cross, an updated version of Generations. That hits Japan next month, and hopefully we won't have to wait too long for a North American release. Speaking of Japanese games coming west, prepare for another Dragon Quest. With the all-new Dragon Quest XI hitting stores in Japan today, Square Enix has confirmed that the game will be getting a North American and European release. They haven't named a specific date, but promised that it will arrive sometime next year, so hopefully it will be early in the year. The announcement was made by franchise creator Yuji Horii in a special video for fans, where he says that the localization work is already underway. Several of the Dragon Quest games have skipped North America altogether, so the fact that the game is coming stateside at all is sure to be welcome news for fans. The new one is being released on the PS4 and Nintendo 3DS. Square Enix is also working on a Nintendo Switch version, which is expected to arrive sometime next year as well. Wonder Woman might be going somewhere no superhero movie has gone before, the Oscars. Variety reports that Warner Brothers is planning a big Oscar push to get the new film nominated for Best Picture and Best Director at this year's Academy Awards. If they're successful, it would be a huge win, not just for the film and director Patty Jenkins, but for the superhero genre as a whole. Although superhero movies have won technical awards like special effects, they've been snubbed by the bigger, more prestigious categories like Best Picture and Best Director, and none of them have even been nominated. The only one to come close was The Dark Knight in 2008. There was buzz that it might get a Best Picture or Best Director nod, but it only won Best Supporting Actor for the late Heath Ledger. There's no going back. You've changed things. The MPAA has changed their rules in recent years to expand the Best Picture category, which has helped more and more genre movies get nominated. So we'll see what happens with Wonder Woman. If you're not sure what an Oscar push is, it's basically when a studio launches a formal publicity campaign for a film to keep it fresh in the minds of MPAA voting members. When a studio puts forward a certain film, it means they're confident that it will at least be a worthy contender. Wonder Woman is currently the biggest film of the summer, and the studio has officially greenlit a sequel due in late 2019. You expect the battle to be fair! A battle will never be fair! <laughs> The PC Master Race won't have to wait much longer to join the fight against the darkness. Bungie has announced that the Destiny 2 beta test will finally hit the PC on August 28th for those who pre-ordered the game and a day later for everyone else. The PC beta will include a mix of single player, co-op, and PvP content, everything that was included in the console beta, which took place on the PS4 and Xbox One last weekend. Bungie hasn't said if PC players will need a Battle.net account in order to play the beta, but since you'll need one for the PC version of the final game, it seems likely. Destiny 2 is the first in the franchise available on the PC, and unlike the console versions, it will run at 60 frames per second or higher and offer 4K graphics, if your PC is powerful enough, that is. I've already got to try the PC version and can confirm that the mechanics feel very natural with a mouse and keyboard. PC gamers will have to wait a little longer for the final version of the game. It hits the PS4 and Xbox One on September 6th, while the PC version doesn't arrive until October 24th. 
Late night comedian Stephen Colbert is taking on the most powerful man in the world in a new comedy series. The Late Show host is joining forces with cable network Showtime to create a new animated series based around U.S. President Donald Trump. The idea is actually inspired by a series of animated skits on The Late Show, which feature Colbert interacting with an animated version of Trump. Like Colbert's late night humor, the new show will poke fun at Trump's various political and personal shenanigans with the goal of producing each episode quickly in order to stay up to date on the latest news. That might be difficult given how quickly Trump is able to stir up new controversies. Given the president's much publicized predilection for cable television, it seems likely that he'll eventually see the show and give it plenty of free advertisement by complaining about it on Twitter. It's slated to premiere this fall. Enjoy. You'll be able to slay a familiar face in the new game Middle Earth Shadow of War. Comedian and Silicon Valley star Kumail Nanjiani is lending his voice and likeness to the new Lord of the Rings inspired game. He's playing a new character named the Agonizer, an orc who, despite his fearsome name, is actually nowhere near as terrifying as he tries to be and is actually quite nervous and unsure of himself. I am going to have your head. I don't know what I'll do with it when I have it, but I'll have it. This should provide some comic relief in the game, which otherwise seems like it's going to be more dark and intense than its predecessor, Shadow of Mordor. The ironic nature of the character seems in line with the type of roles that Nanjiani usually plays, and this isn't his first time appearing at a video game. He voiced characters in Mass Effect Andromeda and Telltale's The Walking Dead. If you like Middle Earth's Shadow of War, you'll be able to put a ring on it this October. I am going to put your head on a pie! Which I think is another word for spear. They may be slightly different, I'm not sure, but anyway, it sounds better than spear, so yeah. Here's a cool video game crossover that we'd like to take out for a spin. Microsoft has revealed that the Regalia car from Final Fantasy XV is coming to their racing game, Forza Horizon 3. Starting August 1st, anyone who has played both games on the Xbox One will be able to download the Regalia in Forza for free, adding it to their roster of high-speed racing cars. Like Final Fantasy XV, the Forza version of the Regalia will be able to transform and make small alterations to its cosmetic appearance, but unfortunately you won't be able to transform it into an airplane the way Noctis and his friends can. And what comes as a bit of a surprise, Microsoft says that you'll only be able to get the Regalia for free if you play the games before August 1st, so you better act fast. This comes as Microsoft is preparing for the release of the all-new Forza Motorsport 7, which crosses the finish line this October. And that wraps us up for The Rundown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about game design, visit our pals at vfs.edu. We'll be back again with a brand new episode for you on Monday. And in the meantime, you've got lots of other content to check out. So do that, and if you like it, press subscribe, okay?